heading to Goose Pond for a once a year extravaganza when otherwise sensible folks get a touch of marsh madness. There's madness, Darby and I tell you, madness afoot in what should be an otherwise pristine wilderness. And a lot of it has something to do with this. And while it's breathtaking to see our national symbol up close and personal, there's something even more majestic about seeing it out in the wild. And it's clearly out hunting, it's really low. And they're doing very well in Indiana. I mean, there's lots and lots of... And they're going right down over the tree. Yeah, right yeah, there, right? yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Right and, and now quartering back. It's a fish, he just ate it. He just gulped it down. But a vision of nature's circle of life is only a prelude to what's brought us here. Sandhill cranes, those are nice big guys. They're about four feet high. They have a wingspan like this, six feet. In that, that that's, yeah, the, that's, that's the sandhill crane. That's the call of the sandhill crane. And it carries easily a mile. Less than 10 years ago, this was all still, you know, farm fields. Completely farm fields. Completely farm fields, and none of these birds were here. This is Goose Pond outside of Linton. And if ever a tract of land could be said to have a destiny, it's this one. You see, since 1895, there'd been, I believe, six different corporate owners and um, 13 different management companies under them trying to manage them. Nobody ever made money. If it rains here two inches, it can cost a million dollars to pump the water out. This uh, wants to be a wetland so much that it can't be farmed. And after nearly 50 years of wrangling, the Natural Resources Conservation Service finally got a hold of Goose Pond. All the prairie grass was planted. A lot, we planted about 400 acres of trees. All of the aquatic vegetation, that was natural in the seed bank. So after 200 years of farming, being turned over and hundreds upon hundreds of gallons of herbicide. It's just sitting there waiting for the right conditions. We'll see here. What, what's Darby say? See, now it's almost dead calm. Uh, so we, we definitely have variable winds. I, I, that's probably why the birds are acting so funny. No one imagined fulvous whistling ducks and, and black-bellied whistling ducks and roseate spoonbills and, and king rails and the numbers that we have. No one, no one expected that stuff. I've been doing this for 28 years. I don't think I've ever seen this before. What no one else also didn't expect was how Goose Pond could change the way Lytton saw itself. You know, our primary funding in the area is small businesses, and then when the economy's down, that's rough. You know, with this abundance of natural resources, it just makes sense to do whatever we can to bring as many people we, as we can in, you know, in the tourism industry. Really let the community know what a great asset they have here. You know, we had people here who were calling their friends out in Oklahoma saying, you know, I want information to take them because we want them to come back with us next year. And should you find the vistas at Goose Pond's Marsh Madness something you want to hold on to, don't worry. The festival offers workshops in creating your own backyard habitats. Okay, raise it up. Insects, you may not think much about insects, but they are a major protein source for birds, especially young birds in development. Drill it down, and then back out. And the parents, it needs to be involved. There's a lot of parents that's not involved with their kids anymore, and, and then we want this to be family oriented. And interestingly enough, did you know that areas like Goose Pond are traditionally funded by an excise tax on the guns and shells purchased by Indiana's hunters? There was an excise tax for photography equipment and birding optics of the same scale. It would blow away the amount right. of money. We're not really capitalizing or taking advantage uh, financially of that. And now it's showtime in the form of 11,000 winged actors. This is what we came for. Well, they're just fascinating. I just love to see them soar and glide and, and do what they do. <laughs> Part of it is the challenge of it, but the other part is you just want to keep the memory of what that was like. Just a feeling of kind of being at one with them for a few minutes. We are the stewards of this, of this land. And who are we to, to decide that this species is not worthwhile to us, therefore we are going to sacrifice it for future generations. Beautiful birds. They're nice and gray, got a nice red head. 
and the fact that they've survived. <laughs> and perhaps they have a right to do so. Thanks to those of you who watch the skies. And Darby and I think that's not such madness after all.